All right, it's Pat Brozick, and this will be, I think, work in progress number eight on the Yag Daga. So uh, last night I did the hexagonal pattern on much of the armor. I showed you what I did on the other pieces. So what I'm going to do tonight is go ahead and get these uh, with the first round of clear coat. And I'm actually out of my Mr. Colored clear coats. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my Playmo um, clear coat. I do have some Mr. Color clear, but not enough to do what I want to do. Oops, sorry. Make a mess. And I want to stay consistent, so I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and stop dropping stuff over here. Ah, my paint room is a bit of a mess right now from the past like eight projects I've done. So I need to spend a day in here cleaning and dusting and stuff. It's really a, a quite a mess. Um, so typically for this step, I would use like Mr. Color GX Clear or Number Forty Six. I got from here. What do I have? No, I don't have enough. I've got one, two, three, four. I've seen how much the 46 I have. I actually have quite a bit of it. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and use the, the U-Fold. Um, so I'm using my, my U-Pole Clear, which I talk about all the time. It's a two-part acrylic urethane uh, automotive clear coat. Uh, for everyone who's going to ask me what I'm using, you want to type in U-Pole 20 colon 88, or this is the part number for the U.S. It's the UP2881. Um, you can get this as a set on Amazon. I think the last time I checked it, it's gone up a little bit. It's like, I don't know, it's under $50 for a sprayable quart. Uh, next time I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna get, go ahead and just get a gallon because for like 40, 30 bucks more, I can get a gallon. Um, I'll get three times, four times as much. So I'm actually getting low on this, so it's about time to, to order some new stuff anyway. Um, and also, the number just determines like the, how fast it cures. I think this is considered a medium cure. And what determines that is basically the, uh, the hardener. Um, it's kind of like a, think of it as like an epoxy, like if you have a 5 minute epoxy, a 15 minute epoxy, and a 30 minute epoxy. Um, one, you know, one will dry faster, cure faster. Um, I'm thinking I may switch to find out which one is the fast cure. Um, just because of my conditions here. Um, you want to, if, if it's really cold outside or cold in your environment or a little more humid, you'd want the, the, uh, the slow cure. Um, Hold on, let me see, make sure I'm saying that right. I take that back. If it's cold out, you'd want a faster cure. If it's warmer out, you want a slower cure, just because it, it works with the temperature better. So I'm gonna go with the fast cure, because um, this is supposed to be able to be wet sanded within like, you know, here it's saying eight to 10 hours, but I find that I need to let it really sit for at least 24 hours, maybe a little bit longer before I feel like it's ready to wet sand. Um, so I feel like it's not drying fast enough, so I probably need to go to a faster cure. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna mix this up. Got my cups here. Now I did find something out last time I used this. I bought, I have some really cheap kind of plastic cups I got off of Amazon, but they are not solvent resistant and I found out and they melted. So make sure you get, if you're gonna use a, a cup, make sure like these are just the Hobby Town or Hob, um, Tower Hobbies mixing cups that are solvent resistant or use something made with glass. I like these because they got measurements on the side and I can measure precisely what I'm doing. So it's four to one. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up. Um, there's 20, uh, 20 mils of the clear, which is real easy. And I can do five mils of the hardener. The lid on my hardener has <laughs> dried on the hardener. So I may have to go get a plier to get this off. Okay, so then I need um, five mils of the hardener. Just like that. And you also have to be careful. Um, putting more hardener in does not necessarily mean it's gonna dry faster. It could actually do the exact opposite and make it dry slower. Um, since it is curing based off a chemical reaction, you don't wanna um, put too much hardener in there. And that's got a skewer here. I'm going to mix it up. 
this stuff is really nasty it's very um, caustic so you want to make sure that you have good ventilation and a respirator my respirators actually due to be changed because um, I can tell that I can start to smell things um, when I have it on which means it's due for some new filters Out my metal stirrer here. And I want to show you something else I purchased a little while ago. Um, I always say I'm always getting, I always get dirt in my paint, and there's there's two things: it's my environment, you know, there's dust in the air, and also um, just from whatever I'm spraying, I'll get dust in the air or dust or particles. That's a little cloudy for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, I'm going to mix up another cup. That should not look cloudy like that. I'm hoping my clear. Still good. I'm actually going to. Um, I'm wondering if there's dust in my cup. That could be it. Let's bring this cup out real quick. I don't think that's a problem, but. Sorry. Spray it and see what it does. I don't think it's going to be an issue. It's weird. You want to make sure you mix that really, really good. So I got my respirator. Um, I'm actually going to spray this a little higher PSI. I'm going to crank it like to 25. And another thing I bought, I bought some of these uh, filters. Um, I can't remember where I got these. Someone, I was looking up for paint filters for airbrushes and these popped up. And uh, it's just another step to kind of help keep stuff out of your paint. Um, I've been using it mostly for uh, when I do like Steinle Rust Primer. Uh, for whatever reason, that primer likes to get chunks in it. So I got that. I'm going to leave this over here with the filter on top to keep dust out of the, the clear coat. I'm going to put some gloves on. And this will get everywhere. It's super sticky. And I've showed this before, so... Someone had just mentioned, oh, learn, learn how to get a glass smooth finish. Well, this is how you're going to do it. All right, so I got clear coat on my airbrush, just my Iwata airbrush. And um, I've got a piece of foam just right outside my spray booth here. So I'll spray a piece in here and I'll put it in the foam. Um, so I'll try to talk as much as I can. Also, if you wear glasses, take your glasses off because the overspray will get on your glasses. You don't want that. The first time I did this, I had glasses and they got all foggy. I thought I would my glasses. Luckily, Mr. Color took it off and it didn't hurt the, hurt the, the glasses. Um, so, you want to make sure you get your part is nice and clean. Just hit it with the airbrush. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just kind of put on a... Um, basically kind of just a mist coat. Just like that. Okay. And what I find out, what I found is that I was, before I was like doing this and then I would let it dry for a little bit. But now I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna follow it up with a wet coat. And I'm gonna spray the whole piece inside and out. Now, 
the trick to getting a smooth finish is air pressure, um, how wet you put it down. So I put it on pretty wet. See that. But that's glass smooth. So I'm gonna go put this part outside. Because you want to let this dry for a little while before you put another coat on. went out and got a duster to try to help get some of the dust off. I always get dust on my paint. I never fail. So there's no, I never <laughs> got a really clean paint job. They look clean because I use flat coat, but when you do clear coat, you got to either make sure it's really clean to begin with or you end up having to sand all the dirt out. So I do the same thing here. It's a real quick kind of this coat just like that and then we're gonna follow up with a wet coat When you're doing your wet coat, you want to make sure you overlap your edges by 50% or so. And you don't want to stop in the middle of a part. You want to make sure you finish. And there you go. And as this dries, it'll actually level out more. That's, but that's pretty glass smooth right there. other two pieces like this super real quick and then I'll get to something bigger where you can actually see what I'm doing a little bit better um, it's kind of hard to tell on these small pieces and it's really good to have a good light source above you and right now I'm not wearing my respirator because these pieces are fairly small I'm not putting out a lot of material but when I get to the big pieces I definitely will have to put it on um, it's good have a good light source above you because you want to catch a highlight I'm always saying that you want to catch a highlight and what that means is that when you're looking at the piece you can see a nice shiny spot that will tell you how smooth your paint is so if you're seeing like any sort of texture like um, orange peel or anything like that um, your where that highlight is will tell you if you're getting smooth paint or not So the main reason I'm work, I'm also spraying the back side is because I mentioned earlier that my client wants to be able to take the armor off and I'm, I'm just trying to build up a little thickness on these little tabs which will help these pieces stay in place um, on the frame because some of, a lot of them don't tab into like a poly cap they just kind of slide into another piece of plastic or another piece of resin okay now we're gonna do it nice and smooth here I'm using that the light source above me Overlapping 50% on each of my strokes. I'm looking at that bright spot from the light to see how it goes down. And once it looks smooth, I'm 
we're good to go. So I'm going to do that one like that and I'll do a big piece. On this first initial clear coat, if I can get if I can get these sprayed with little to zero dust in it, um, I'll be good. Because my goal is to um, at the very end, after I'm done all my decals and panel lines and done the final clear, if I need to, I'll wet sand and polish that 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 love that uh that layer clear. All right, again, same thing. Kind of a little, little light coat. That just gives something the next wet coat to stick to. do a big piece next. Let's see, so a good piece to show would probably be um, one of the leg armors. So one of these guys, just a nice big flat surface. And you'll be able to see what I'm doing spraying technique wise a little bit better. So again, we're going to Try to get us any dust off, if possible. I tried to look for uh, an anti-static brush. I, I called a bunch of different art stores and they didn't have what I was looking for. When I first started studying photography, I had this, it was called, it was called an anti-static brush. It was really small, about this big. And it actually had a piece of plutonium in it. Uh, very, very tiny. It wasn't harmful to the user but it created an anti-static effect. So if you brushed your, like your, your film negatives off, it would actually make the dust repel. Um, Cause you would, in the film days before digital, you would you know, put your films in an enlarger and you'd want to get all the dust off of those. You spend a lot of time with a little paintbrush retouching all those little spots out. So I was looking for one of those. Uh, apparently they stopped making them cause I guess they thought the plutonium was dangerous, but it was such a minimal amount. Like it didn't even show up on a Geiger counter, but it, it was just enough to, uh, make dust not stick to your film negative. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more piece without my respirator, just so I can kind of explain what I'm doing. And then um, I'll spray everything with one coat, I'll let it dry for a little while, and I'll do a second coat. And so first one's just a light kind of mist layer. Make sure you get all the edges. Again, so we're just going to kind of press this on. Okay, so that's the first kind of coat. You can see it's not very shiny. I just got a little. This is where I kind of get uh, where I should if I should worry about this little speck of dust or not, and the paint there. I'm gonna pause and be right back. Okay, I had a little hair in there and I was luckily got it out without screwing the paint up. <laughs> sometimes you should just, if you see something, sometimes you should just leave it because you'll do more damage. But I was real careful, got in there and it looks much better now. Okay, so that was a tacky coat. Now we're gonna throw in the wet coat. Let's see if you guys can see what I'm doing better in the... And this is going on fairly wet. I'm not opening my airbrush up all the way because I'll just flood it and you get a run. So hit all the edges before you hit all the flat surfaces. That way you make sure you got them. So 
now we're gonna hit this flat surface and I'm gonna I'm gonna probably back up a little bit and get a wider pattern so again I'm gonna put it on pretty wet I'm gonna overlap my spray pattern about 50% and I'm using the light above to show me my how my paint texture Spraying clear coat is different than painting a spraying a paint. When you're spraying paint, you're looking for coverage. When you're spraying a clear coat, you're looking for texture. So I sprayed that in that nice in the bright light above, and you can see there it's nice and shiny. So that's looking good. So um, basically, you let this dry. 10 15 minutes and then you can do a second coat so by the time i'm done doing all these parts i can go back and do the second coat and they'll be done they'll be ready for uh panel lines and decals uh not tomorrow probably the next day so um that's really it for this work in progress i think because that's what i'm going to do tonight it's, it's already late it's already like nine o'clock and this will take me a good hour or so to spray these parts so just a real quick work in progress only 20 minutes or so but using the two the two part acrylic urethane you get an idea of how to spray really slick. You want to do kind of a mist coat. Just let it tack up for a few for a minute or so, and then go on there and put a nice wet coat on, overlapping 50% with your spray pattern. Don't stop in the middle of a panel. If you end up running out of clear coat in the middle of a panel, when you go back to spray it, start again from where you started, and then just go ahead and finish it up, and that blend that that your stop point will blend in. Um, but that man, that looks really cool. Um, let's see if it's going to focus. But yeah, well that's all glossy. When, once It's hard to tell now, but once you get all the decals on and all the little other bits painted, this is going to look really, really sharp. So that's looking cool. So again, uh, just a little quick 20 minute work in progress. And always, thanks for watching. It's Matt Rosick. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye.